Yeah. So let, let me ask you this question. So how many are with Josie? You're up at five or six in the morning to wake up. Wake up. Anybody? Re none. Nobody. <laughs> Josie's a, she, her own guest. Okay, let, let's sure. start this. How many will open presents tonight? Anybody? There's some. So, okay, yeah, so okay. there's some. Yeah, uh -huh. there, there's uh -huh. some. Um, how about tomorrow morning then? Okay, like, like most everyone. How about uh -huh. you? Uh, tomorrow morning will be the day. Tomorrow morning? Uh-huh. During the day, 5 o'clock in the morning? Definitely not 5 o'clock in the morning. No, no, no. no. So no. I, uh, our tradition was always on Christmas Eve night, and then um, when, when, when I married Jen, I, just like, it just... Transition to Sunday to Christmas morning. Yeah, it just yeah. happens, huh? That's when we do it. Different so gift, yeah. gift giving, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, something's going to happen when we open gifts, you know, um, whether it's tonight or tomorrow, mm -hmm. right? So some of us are going to go crazy, like I can't believe this gift I just got, right? Excited, waiting all year for it. Waiting all year for this for this one gift, I can't believe it. And then some of us are going to go like. Really? <laughs> I mean, we're not going to say it no, out loud. No, you don't know. We won't say Boys that out loud. Do not say that out but loud. But we're going to be just, thinking, how do I, you know. This is it. <laughs> so how do I navigate this one, right? Yeah. How, how do I negotiate this, you know? And so like, mm -hmm. so there's going to be a couple of reactions maybe, and maybe somewhere, somewhere in between, because mm -hmm. what we're talking about this morning for just a few minutes is this, kind of something to remember and toss around, maybe in your... Uh, your uh, Christmas meal or discussions like the gift reveals the giver. Mm -hmm. Can you say it? The gift, the gift reveals mm -hmm. the giver. And, and uh, to a large extent, and we're going to share some gift types of gift givers, that is true, mm -hmm. right? The gift reveals the giver. So the, whoa, this, you put a lot of thought into this or maybe not so much mm -hmm. thought into this. So yeah, it says a lot about the person. Anyway, you want to go first? Yeah. Well, okay. yeah. So, so we talk about some different, uh, different types of gift givers. Um, one of them is the sentimental gift giver. And these are people that could, um, could include a picture or a memory, something that they wrap up and give you and it just has that really sentimental value, it just sticks with you. And that, that's a nice, nice, Gift giving type. Yeah, calendars, right? Calendars can be that potentially. Yeah. Maybe, maybe even the, the calendar that, that is like personally put together with special pictures. Yeah, it's going to go a little yeah, bit further than the, like the calendar from the store. Uh -huh. Okay, then there's this one. Now, if you've ever known of this gift giver, I want you to clap, okay? The complainer. <laughs> the, here's what the complainer does they will tell you how difficult it was to get your gift. Yes. And how much money they spent on your gift. You don't know how hard this was, right? <laughs> I searched Amazon over and over and over All and over. over. I finally found it. Okay, yes. that's the complainer, okay? <laughs> All right. And then we got the... We got the, the last minute gift giver, um, you yeah. know, and those are the standard, you know, uh, how many of us will find ourselves in that category getting our last minute gift? Okay. Uh, come on, preach. Yes. We still have some of us in that category. Yes. So, you know, last minute gift giver, we go out, we can't find what it is that we need. So we just uh, opt to the, the gift card. You yeah. Know? Gift card. Yeah. Sorry. Grab the gift card, be able to give that away, which by the way, I think is a beautiful present to be able to give to people and receive. Yeah. You can take it, do what you want. So the gift card, the gift card, it's a, it's a win in my opinion. Yeah. Well, unless you get a gift card that's been scammed, that's yeah, going That is a problem. Right? I heard that's a so, thing. Yeah. Okay. How many... Uh, speaking of la how many have not yet done your Christmas shopping? Out yourself. Okay, so you're waiting for this. You're waiting for this gathering to get over, so you can go do your Christmas shopping. Okay. Um, there's the gadget gift giver. Mm -hmm. the, this gift giver always looks at a gadget, and a vacuum cleaner is not a gadget. That's a necessity, right? So Absolutely. that's not a gadget. So stay away from, stay away from that one mm -hmm. there. Yeah. And then we have the the you know the ever present regifter. You know, you get the present you didn't want and just make sure it gets to somebody else that may want it, right? So, you know, there's always that kind of person. Yeah, and oftentimes the re-gifter, you recognize something about that gift. <laughs> Sometimes. You got to be careful of that. Yeah, I think I've seen this yeah, one Yeah, you got to be careful if you're going to re-gift. That's yeah. for sure. And always like the one we actually weren't going to mention, but I'm going to mention again, the, the charity gift giver. <laughs> so you know what the charity gift giver does? This really bless you. The charity gift giver gives like a thousand dollar gift to somebody else in your name and it says Merry Christmas. Yeah. Thank you. And, and so like that's where we can't respond to much like, okay, I'm really happy for the charity. <laughs> that you gave Thank you very else. much. But, but, but you did that right, right? right. <laughs> then there's the genuine gift giver, right? Absolutely. So that person like, 
What yeah, about that? that? This person will, wants to give you a gift and spends massive amounts of yeah. time thinking through it. Like they go through all the extra places to make sure that this gift is the perfect gift for you. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like, what can I do to make you happy? They go yeah. the extra mile. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So they might consider what your deepest need is even. Mm-hmm. Right, might consider what you've been wanting all, all. It might be, might be considering your future. I mean, you can go on and on and on. Mm-hmm. So that's the genuine gift giver. And I'm sure that's all of you Absolutely. out there. Mm-hmm. Um, there there's one other um, gift giver. A bonus. Bonus. And that's, that's the grandkids give their gift. Nothing is ever wrong with a grandkid gift, ever. That they can true. never mess it up. Nothing. They that give you a true. painted rock. It's the best gift ever. Absolutely. Yes, that's right. <laughs> so and amen. Because it actually, um, um, we have one of those painted rocks on our, on our mantle mm-hmm. bookshelf there that one of our grandkids give us. Mm-hmm. It's out there every, every year. So anyway, it's the best. Nothing is ever wrong with a grandkid, grandkid gift, yeah. Yeah. right? Um, but let me suggest a, a gift that, that may be that we've not thought about before. And it's one um, that might cause you to go like, okay, truly, I'm not, uh, why me? Right. I'm not worthy of this one. And it's, it's called this, it's gift of an of announcement, gift of an announcement. So here's what that is. Um, someone you know, um, their family is about to expand, right? And they come up to you and they go, hey, I just want to tell you this. Like, you're the first one to know. Yeah. Just don't tell anybody. Mm-hmm. We're going to have a, we're going to have another baby, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, or something like that. Or maybe uh, it could be um, a marriage, right? right? What else? I mean, mm-hmm. something like that. Well, yeah, I mean, it could even be, sometimes it might even be like not so good news. Like, hey, yeah. something's transitioned in my that's life true. and I just want to let you know. It actually is a gift yeah. to let that person know because that says something about the relationship. Yeah, it does. It mm-hmm. does. It means like I'm going to honor you with this gift of an announcement. Mm-hmm. It won't take you to, to a, a bit of a Bible story. Last week, we, if you were here, we talked about the nativity um, that 43% of us have in our homes on, on average. Mm-hmm. And the one thing unique about the nativity scene is that Jesus is always in the center. So we talked about that last week. Jesus at the center of the nativity and Jesus at the center of my life. But there are other biblical characters in our nativity and we put them all in there at the same time, even right. though maybe biblically not so correct. Yeah. But there was a group of guys there. Mm-hmm. Um, that were there for the birth, the mm-hmm. shepherds, right? Yeah. And so um, I'd like to suggest to you that the shepherds in the field that day, they were recipients of this gift of an announcement of something that was going to come and happen. Right. right. Yeah. And it may special. have caused them to go like, huh, yeah. us? Yeah, there's something special. There was something right. about that kind of relationship that was to be, to yeah. be offered. And, and I'm going to uh, read this, this announcement. And I just want to encourage us to, to think about the idea of an announcement as I read this, that it's not just another passage, not just reading a Christmas story, but listen to it in terms of the idea of receiving an announcement. Like, what would it have been like to have been a shepherd that day? Yeah. It says, and in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great joy, with great fear. And the angel said to them, and here's the announcement, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on, p- in earth, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away f- from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us of all people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that thought of like, out of all the announcements, out of all the people, it was given to shepherds. I can just imagine like, what would it have been like to be thinking about that in that day, to receive that in that, that, that evening? What would that have been like? Yeah, so let's put ourselves into the story for just a moment. This morning I was reading in my uh, normal Bible reading devotion time and I, I was putting myself into the story as if I were there. And I'd like for you to kind of do that right now if you can. You're, you're, you're out in the field. You're one of the shepherds. So like you're all shepherds right now. How's that? And all of a sudden the skies open up mm-hmm. and this glorious announcement happens, mm-hmm. right? And you go like, well, first of all, it'd probably startle you, right? Right. So don't, be, don't be fearful. Right. 
Um, but I am sure, at least as I put myself in the story, I'm thinking, why me? Right. Why, why me? And right. thoughts like that. There's those other thoughts that yeah. come like, wait, I'm not worthy to receive yeah. a message like that. Like, out of all the people, why would you come and talk with me? Right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That's there. And I, and I think that maybe they must have been, they must have had some conversations like between themselves, like, are we really hearing this or is it just me? Are you hearing it too? Mm -hmm. Are you seeing this? All of that, right. all of that was going on to this group of people, these shepherds, um, who were not considered like of high status, right? right? They weren't, weren't considered high status. So it would have been a proper question for them to go like, why is this coming to us? In fact, some have written on that. So mm -hmm. and Randy Alcorn mm -hmm. um, wrote uh, from his shared understanding about the status of the shepherd. Just listen to it. In Christ's day, shepherds, that's all of us now, right, stood on the bottom rung of the Palestinian social ladder. They shared the same unenviable status as tax collectors and dung sweepers. Hmm. So that's, that's what I would call low status right there, right? When the 12 tribes of Israel migrated to Egypt, they encountered a lifestyle foreign to them. The Egyptians were agriculturists, as farmers, they despised shepherding because sheep and goats meant death to crops. Battles between farmers and shepherds are as old as they are fierce. And so that was their status. No kidding. Yeah. A, another person writes about it this way. It says, one passage written in the written record of the oral law describes them, speaking of shepherds, as incompetent. Another says, no one should ever feel obligated to rescue a shepherd who has fallen into a pit. Can you imagine that? So Just leave them. Yeah, so shepherd gets hurt, falls into a pit. Just let him go, because he's not worth anything. Crazy. Another writes this, first of all, this grand announcement that Mario just read is happening as a private presentation for unsuspecting shepherds. These are not the kings and the rulers, the scribes and the Pharisees, the learned and the influential, the esteemed of the day. It's precisely the opposite. These men live near the lowest rung of society. They herd sheep. I mean, that's it. And one says to buy wool, milk, or a kid, meaning like, uh, not like an actual kid, just to be clear, from, the yeah. <laughs> from, from a shepherd was forbidden <clears throat> on the assumption that if you were buying it from them, you would be buying stolen property. Like, that was just like the way people thought about the shepherds. Yeah, they were. They had nothing they of their were own. So the, the why us is a really good question mm -hmm. that, that, that would have come. Um, how, why are, why are we, we chosen? We're the ones who are unimportant. We are not the influencers of the day. Like we're shepherds working with not so bright, bright sheep. Mm -hmm. It was a good, 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 good question. Mm -hmm. They weren't the influencers of the day. One of the old, um, I refer to them as old dead guys, but affectionately so, um, <laughs> people like Charles Spurgeon. Um, he wrote this because the, the thing I think that is important for us to consider as shepherds is this announcement came to people just like you and me. Yeah. Right? Because we're just like normal, regular people. The gift reveals the giver. Hang on to that. Spurgeon says this, when I think of the Prince of Glory and the Lord of Angels stooping so low as this, that a poor woman bears him in her arms and calls him her babe, surely there must be salvation for the lowest, the poorest, and the most sunken. When the all-glorious Lord, in order to be incarnate, is born of a poor woman and publicly acknowledged as a poor woman's child, we feel sure that he will receive the poorest and most despised when they seek his face. Yes, Jesus, the son of the carpenter, means salvation to carpenters and all others of lowly rank. Now, the reality is, when we read the story that Mario just read from the Bible, um, we're on this side of the story, right? So we know all this happened, all that's going on. Mm -hmm. But the shepherds were on this side Absolutely. of the story. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It was all just being revealed to them for the first time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so all the questions that we, that we uh, have just talked about were a part of their story over here. And I'm sure as he traveled to see the baby Jesus, all these things were going on, on in their mind. You know, why us and why this announcement? But just like the angels received an announcement, so have we. Mm -hmm. And it's found in probably, if, if you're brand new to the Bible, it's found in probably one of the more well-known 
um, Bible passages, and we're calling it a gift of an announcement to you and to me. Right. Yeah. And that gift is one that we may have heard quite frequently. Sometimes we even see it at football games and lift yeah. it up. John three sixteen. it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting or eternal life. And so there's this announcement that God gives, that Jesus and that night gives to a man named Nicodemus, but it is an announcement for all of us. And and to be on this side of it and to recognize here is this announcement that has been given to us, to recognize that for God, God is the one that's eternal. He is overall, this creative God, this is the one who came. He so loved us that he set this rescue plan in place. Now, while we were still in sinners, is what the scriptures say, while we were still sinners, Christ came. He died for us. And he set this because he loved us that much. That says something about the giver. That he gave his only son, is what Jesus said that day, that, that evening. That it means that there's no other way. You know, we live in a society where there's so many different ways that people talk about, hey, this is how you can get salvation. This is how you can be saved. This is how you can be a good person. This is how you can do the work to become whatever it is you're supposed to be. But, but Jesus makes it really clear that there's really only one way to be saved, only one way, and it's through him. For he gave of his one and only son that so whosoever believed in that person of Jesus Christ. And that, that's a choice that we all get to make. Jesus has done the part of coming as a little baby, living among us and dying for our sins. And he says, whoever believes, you have the choice whether you're going to believe what it is he's done for you and receive the salvation that he's offered to us. That's that message, that announcement that was given that day to Nicodemus and for all of us. Exactly right. So put John 3.16, as Verse Mario just shared, within within, the context of, of our big idea, what we're remembering today, the gift reveals the giver. The gift reveals the giver. For God so loved, he's the giver, that he gave the gift of his son, Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. to you and to me. We'll open gifts in the next couple, couple days. Um, to a large extent, they reveal the thought behind the gift. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but the gift behind God the Father giving his son, because you're right, we're on this side of the story. Mm-hmm. He has come. The shepherds that they had a choice to make when they heard this, didn't they? So they, they, they could have turned the other way Absolutely. and left, mm-hmm. and only God knows how that story would have, would have turned out. Mm-hmm. But they didn't do that, right? They received that gift, and they went to the baby Jesus. And that's, that's you and me today. Many of us here today and online, we have received that gift of eternal life. Um, we heard it, and we received it, and Jesus is our peace. Jesus is our Savior. Jesus is our Lord. For some of us, maybe um, we're here today, we're online today because you know it's Christmas Eve and what do you do on Christmas Eve? You you go to church somewhere. And maybe you've never really considered what we're talking about in within kind of that framework, like the gift, the giver. He loved me that much that he gave his son. Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, in fact, the Bible says like there's no greater love, right, Mm -hmm. than someone who gives their, their life. But that's what God, the giver, gave to you and me, the gift of his son, Jesus Christ.